subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Matt and Garrett are back with you again. He's Matt. I'm Garrett. I always like the way you do that, Matt. I'm always afraid you're going to flip it around and mess it up, but you do such a great job, so I had to try it myself. Well, maybe we should flip it around. It was great. Because, I mean, it, until we do more more video, which is coming, by the way, particularly if you're in our Facebook group, I mean, people kind of are guessing. I mean, you can hear us saying each other's names a lot, but a lot of times we don't. And so it's like, wait, whose voice is whose, right? Yeah, we have so, people all the time that are like, so you have the little kid, like the little ones? I'm like, nope, not me. I have the big ones. Yeah. So uh, again, welcome everybody. Sorry, I got sidetracked there. It's just the way my brain's working today. But uh, welcome all of you that are new and you are just tuning in for the first time, or maybe you've listened to a couple and you're like, what is the bigger picture of where this comes from? Go to ninjaselling.com. You can learn more about where this all is, what it's all about. If you want to learn more about the coaching program that Matt and I spent again, a good deal of our day in and helping others grow their business. That's available through ninjaselling.com. And if you want to be part of our amazing Facebook community that we have of listeners and people that also enjoy the podcast, you can go to Facebook, the Ninja Selling Podcast, and you will find that. It's like 12,500 people now, Matt. So we are- Lots of people. Lots of people. Infinite. Infinite. Billions. So today, we want to talk about give your kids some credit. Good job, kiddo. Way to go. Wait. Oh, not- not that type of credit. <laughs> Gold star. Matt, this came out of a, of a situation for me, and, and I'm a big believer in building wealth through real estate. Uh, I think uh, the sooner you can get involved with real estate and growing through real estate, I think can uh, dramatically change the direction of your wealth building patterns. I know for everybody I've ever talked to, they're usually like, I wish I could have bought a home sooner. I wish I did buy a home sooner. I wish that opportunity was a, was available to me. And um, one of the things years back that I uh, I kind of was like when my wife was doing it, I was like, "What are you doing? Like, I don't I don't understand the value or the purpose of this." And what she did was she added all of my kids. I think it's the age I want to say it was thirteen. I think now that I'm thinking about it, it's fifteen. But Matt, maybe you can back me up on that. But there's a there's an age, either thirteen or fifteen, and it's not coming to me at the moment that you can add your children into your history of, of your credit. We, we did is we added all of our children onto our longest standing credit card. We got them a credit card. Uh, we didn't give it to them, by the way. This is where you need to be a responsible person also. We didn't be like, here, kid, have a credit card. Go have some fun. That was not it. But what we did do is we added them onto it. They had no idea. We continued to make our payments like we did as, do as responsible human beings. And here we sit today, Matt. My daughter is going to college down in Texas. We are looking at buying a house down there. We're actually under contract right now on a property in College Station. Woo! Very excited. Woohoo! And as we're doing this, um, one of the things that came up was, can we put my daughter on title for this house? And uh, the first question they asked was, does she have a credit score? And we're like, a matter of fact, she does. And they're like, well, what is it? And we're like, it's $7.95. This child has never made a payment on anything in her life, just so we're all clear. So here we are. She sits at a $7.95 and we have a lender going, sweet, she's first. Perfect. Uh, but we do need to make sure that there's somebody here that is making money and is going to be able to make the payments. <laughs> we need somebody who can add to the income side of the debt to income ratio here. Yes. So now we have that. In, but this all of a sudden, she qualifies for a first time home buyer. She qualifies in Texas. There's homestead exemptions and all kinds of stuff. She is now available to be very quickly on the track to being an in-state resident. And all of a sudden massive savings for college. Like I can't even begin to explain the savings <laughs> that are there when paying college tuition, when you're an in-state and anybody who's a parent out there who has kids going to college goes, yes, oh, yes, it's very, very, very different fees you pay. This has been a really interesting journey, Matt. And this is what I wanted to talk to you about today is that we have opportunity as, as parents and in, in, as we're raising our kids and helping them have the best chances ever and this is one of those ones, and I give full credit to my wife, actually, that here I'm watching a 19- She gets the gold star. She really does get the gold. Sarah's amazing. 
here we have a 19 year old kid that is all of a sudden going to be a property owner of a four bedroom, four and a half bath house with renters underneath her and all this stuff. I'm like, how did we get here? It all started back at that point. And this is where I want to, again, chat with you, Matt, today, because this is opportunities that we have for our kids that a lot of people just kind of go like, man, why why did somebody else get a chance to do that? And I'm, again, thanks to Sarah, I'm able to be a part of the, the success story at the moment. Can't take any of myself. Yeah. I think this is, I mean, I have obviously younger, I'm the one with the little ones, Matt here with the little kiddos, four and one and a half. So it's like, how early can you start doing this and, or just even start thinking about it, right? I mean, and I think a lot of this is roped into a bigger conversation of financial success for the next generation. So a lot does start with paying attention to yourself and everything. And and and, and we all have, and you may have, if you're listening, you know, a challenging situation. You're like, man, I, I can't even, I got to figure my stuff out so I can then figure my kid's stuff out. You can do it all together if it's part of a bigger picture. And I think of if you're focusing on how do I give my kid good credit to set them up for success, it changes the why behind how you're handling some of your own finances, right? Yeah. Because I look at my little ones, I'm like, all right, how can I like put money in 529 or a savings to buy them a property and all this kind of stuff? And it's like, it changes the motivation around my own finances. Now you asked like, how how young can you start doing this? And I think it, based on the quick internet search uh, that you can do, it's going to vary credit card company to credit card company, but I think some of them don't have a minimum age requirement of having an authorized user under your account. I think you must be 18 to have your own credit card, but if you can start an authorized user, that starts to build their credit, I would assume. I don't know all the nuances behind this, but... Here's the thing that we learned when doing this is they, from what we understand, is they got to basically inherit our history with that card Yeah, by having them put onto it. Yeah, well, funny story about that. I've been an American Express member since 1973. You sound like an advertisement. 73? 73. Matt, how old are you? I am 37. When were you born? You you can see it here. There, there's the there's the proof. The 73. When were you born? 1985. <laughs> <laughs> I just received my 50-year member gift in the mail a couple months ago as a very nice bl- blanket. Thank you, American Express. I really appreciate it. Clearly, when we, I was added to a credit card at some point, actually, I was never added to a credit card. I opened my own one, but the names, I guess, all like whatever. And um, they're like, oh, 73. My mom's jealous. She's like, I've only been a member since 75. I was like, geez. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Anyway, that's a little diversion of the story. But I mean, actually, that became a problem on our first house that we bought because they were like, um, we have a discrepancy here. And I was like, what? They're like, your credit history goes back to 73. But that's, I was like, <laughs> oh, where you were born. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, magic. Anyway. <laughs> So I think this, I think that's the easiest first step is to check with your credit card company to see, see, Hey, I mean, well, I should say the first step should be talking to a financial advisor or accountant or someone who is hundred percent. This is the big disclaimer here, not financial advice. We are not financial advisors. This is not all the legal advice. Disclaimer, 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 talk to these people, but also like do some research on your own, right? Because if you build your kids credit, like like when they're 18, 19, 20, they can be miles ahead of what they're able to do. And I'm not saying that people should be like, oh, this is great. Now we're going to just go borrow money because that's really what credit allows you to do. But it, it also, but just having a credit score to get a mortgage, which you can imagine what home prices are going to be if you have kids that are 10 in eight, nine, 10 years, right? And while it would be fantastic to Dave Ramsey a house and buy it in cash, like it's hard to do as well. But if you can house hack it too, think about like a kid, your kid going to college, or maybe they don't go to college at that point because it's not a thing anymore, but they buy their first house and they can house hack it by owning it themselves with maybe a parent on the title and then having their friends rent from them so that they actually start to establish also a cash flow from that. They wouldn't be able to do that if they don't have a credit score. Yep. Well, and so that's my hope, like with doing this is that Celeste is actually going to get the opportunity here of, of seeing firsthand rent checks coming in. 
and having to understand like, okay, this, this, this is she, the minute she figured it out, she was funny. She goes, well, why don't we buy more of these? I'm like, let's get, let's get started with one and we'll figure out where this goes. Cause all of a sudden she started to do the math and look at how the numbers worked. And I was like, okay, you, this is one of the reasons I wanted you to be a part of this and be in this. The interesting thing I find about the credit, Matt, is it's that we can, all of us listening, there are ones of you out there going, when if it was money, if I was sitting here saying, like, set up a fund and, and put enough money aside so that you could help your kids with something in the future, there's a lot of sometimes baggage that can come with that of like, yeah, but that's, I mean, I got to take that money out of my account. I got to put it into a different, you know, I got this is, it's a savings thing at that point in time. Credit's an interesting one. And obviously you need, you need to be a responsible person in taking care of your credit. You do. Cause you could mess up their credit too. If you're running some challenging stuff, right? Yes. You could do the opposite for them if you really wanted to, or if you weren't careful about it, which you'd have to be, this is all being, and there's things, and that this is a really interesting point. There are unforeseen things that trash people's credit that you have to be very careful about. You know, there are, there are divorces out there. There are, um, you know, health issues that come up that all of a sudden you have health bills that aren't being paid that all of a sudden trash, you know, will trash people's credit. Well, and that's where I would probably be, you know, take attention to like, okay, which, which card am I going to add the child onto, you know, and have maybe an emergency plan somewhere else. Also, if you're a, a cash person, like more power to you, by the way, I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But if you're a credit card person, which a lot of people are, even if you're just like paying it off, like I got myself into a lot of trouble years and years and years ago with credit cards. Thank God that's fixed. And now like, and balances are paid every month. The credit card's there because it's got fantastic awards, you know? Well, you've been a member since 1973, Matt. So, I mean, I know it, it's a long history, right? <laughs> But I think it would make sense to have a card that's, uh, and this is just pontification, not financial advice, by the way, like have a card that's like your card, like, hey, this is our emergency card. If we ever need to like carry a balance, like this is the card. And hey, this is the card that we like do groceries, you know, electric bills and all the stuff that we just pay every single month. And we're putting the kids on that to show good credit history, good credit balance. Like maybe that one's the one that you just like blow the limit up, but you never even like touch it. So because there's a difference between like, revolving balance and how much limit you have and all this stuff or not revolving balance used balance yep you don't want revolving don't do that everybody anybody who tells you by the way that like it's good to have a little bit of revolving credit because it's good for your credit score tell them to go somewhere else because paying 22 percent interest is never a good idea matt started off with we're not financial advisors we're not giving financial advice yeah, and then he goes right into that <laughs> oh just so you know don't ever 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 do this i just because i had somebody tell me that once and I was like, really? And this was and this was long ago, early in my real estate career. This person was a a lender. Yeah. And I was like, that cannot be true. That cannot be. Oh, yeah, I know. It's like, but what about the interest? Like these credit cards are 15 to 20, 22%. Oh, it's worth it for this just to carry a little bit of a balance every month. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was dumb. <laughs> so... Anybody who's listening to this out here right now, I think the opportunity is there for you to say, okay, if I have young kids, what are ways that I can set them up so that they have the most opportunities? And there's way more. This is just one little teeny piece of giving your kids opportunities in the future. But it's also one of those things that I think you could look back on and go, I wish I would have. This is one that I would have. If it wasn't for my wife taking care of this, I would have been one of the ones listening, going, I wish I would have done that for my children. And I just, I can't go back and do it. Well, and here's another idea too. Everybody, even like, you don't have to, I mean, they say start early with all this stuff. They, I mean, go watch any or read any blog about this. Experian, one of the credit rating agencies has a nice blog out there on, on credit. You start young is great, but also like, hey, when your kids turn 16, most states you get your driver's license. A lot of parents are getting their kids a car. If you're going to get a car and a car loan, have them on the loan, yep. right? And and co-sign it with them, obviously, you'll probably have to, but that's that's a great little debt vehicle that's going to, and you just set it up an automatic payment. Like you can't get in trouble. Well, you can, but- I was going to say, hard, <laughs> this is massive hard advice get, again. <laughs> you can't get in trouble. It's not win -win. financial advice. <laughs> Not financial advice. It's hard to get in trouble with a car loan that you already have set up for automatic payment. In just five years, it's done. It's gone. You paid, made every payment on time. That's going to look really good. 
Yeah, as long as you have overdraft protection on your, uh, uh, I mean, hey, the payments get made. Well, yeah, there's a lot of other, yes, there's a lot of nuances. I totally get it. Hey, by the way, it's coming from a guy who I already told you, I had a lot of a lot of trouble with credit card debt long ago. So <laughs> we fixed it though. It's like you're talking about you had trouble with the law. I, yeah, I, had, I had some run-ins with the law in the past. Yeah, <laughs> spend, spend some time in the, no, no, thankfully not. None of that, none of that. Well, I've been pulled over for speeding before, if that counts. Oh, I've, I've never done that. No, not at all. You only speed on the racetrack. Yeah. And then it's not speeding because there's no speed limit. It only, only if you get tickets. That's the only time it counts. Yeah. I thought the limit meant minimum. Like it was a, it was a bottom, it was a downward limit. Um, that argument didn't work. It did not work. More advice from Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think, um, again, I, this, the reason we wanted to share this is this is something, I mean, we obviously, we, we deal with housing a lot. We coach people with real estate. And this has been one of my eye openers that I've recently had. And I've been try- telling all my friends, that's why you're all listening right now. You're all my friends, by the way, if you didn't realize this. I've been telling all my friends about this going, you know, this is something to be thinking about, especially if they have younger children. And uh, that's why I brought up to Matt of saying, hey, I think this is something that we should throw out to the podcast. Go get advice, though. Don't just sit here and say, Garrett and Matt said this, and this is what we should do. Research credit cards, research stuff that you have in your state, talk to financial planners, learn the ins and outs, decide for yourself if you feel that this is a good pattern and a plan for you. It has been very interesting in a positive way for my world and watching this right now. And this is my first child that we're doing this with. And I, I'm actually looking forward to my next child now, her sister of helping her buy a, a property somewhere and being able to do the exact same thing. And you know whether we're like house hacking and again, same thing, buying a three bedroom house somewhere and renting out the other rooms and allowing her to have a very reduced rent so that she can live anywhere she wants to live and get a job that she can still have the security of all that. Like, I'm all in, but it all starts with giving them the opportunity of being there because then they get to use their first time homebuyer tax credits. They get to all kinds of stuff, which is not tax credits, but they're reduced down payments and all kinds of things to their benefits. It's it's wonderful so far for us. Yeah, it really is. And I'm looking forward to experiencing that in however many years when we do that with Victoria. Um, and I hope out of this episode, you know, because when we started talking about this, when you started talking about what you were going to be doing with your daughters and, and real estate and all that stuff, it really made me think about like, how can I manage my personal finances better to help set them up for better success? And I, so even if you're not in the place yet to say, hey, yes, we're ready to build credit or you don't have kids yet or whatever it is, hopefully, I'm hopeful that this episode just helps you think about it a little more. And yes, go find, um, if you have a financial planner or a financial advisor or you start with your accountant, if you have an accountant. And if you don't, you can probably find one through a Google search or get a recommendation from someone. There's financial coaches out there too now. Yep. Some really great resources out there to help you with all of that stuff. So hope that inspires you to do it. And Matt, if you can get Victoria on your American Express, she's going to get to celebrate the 100 year appreciation at the age of 40. Oh my gosh. Imagine if I add her and, they, and she get and the card shows up and says member since 73. When we added Jen, it, her she's only been a member since 14. So... She didn't get that benefit for some reason, but maybe it was because she, you know, she married it. I don't know. We're, we'll find out. You found a loophole. We'll find out. Direct bloodline here. Member since 1973. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope no one, from, no one from American Express is listening and like, oh, we better correct that. I'm like, oh, dang. Yeah. You get a new card in the mail. Like we're going to need the blanket back. <laughs> <laughs> Send it back. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Well, Everybody, if you're still with us this far, thank you so much for joining us on this fantastic episode of the Ninja Selling Podcast. Garrett, thanks for bringing this topic up. I think it's it's a great thing for people to start thinking about. And thank you to everybody who's tuning in. If you haven't joined our community, head over to Facebook and search for the Ninja Selling Podcast. You'll find the community there where you can talk about this if you want to talk about this. We post all of our episodes in there as posts so that you can comment right on there directly if you want to converse about the episode, give your thoughts, comments, compliments, whatever you would like to share. Compliments. Yeah. Praise. Yeah, the compliments and uh, and all the praise that you have for us. We appreciate it. <laughs> and 
any feedback you have, criticism yep. is always welcome as well. Constructive. Be gentle. Constructive criticism, please. So if you guys want to learn more about Ninja Selling, you know where to go. Head over to ninjaselling.com. And if there's anything that we can do for you, just reach out to us. We'd be happy to happy to help. So thanks again for joining us. We appreciate you. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you to everyone. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.